<laughs> it's morning here in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. I'm just getting back from taking my youngest to her summer program. And my oldest is doing boarding for the summer um, as she prepares for her next year prep exams. And I've been thinking about doing this video for a while. A lot of people ask me these questions. How are the kids adapting? And they're living their best life, okay? They love it in Tanzania. Um, and in this video, I wanna share. And so I'm just getting back from dropping off, like I said, my little one. So I'm having coffee, you're getting fresh face Ashley. And yeah, let's get into it. So first off, I want to thank the community of this channel for getting us to over 8,000 subscribers. I woke up this morning, we were at eight, over 8,000 and I'm just in awe because I was not expecting this type of growth to the channel. Um, I just wanted to share and I'm so grateful that people find value in the content that I'm sharing and I'm gonna keep going forward, y'all. I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, because it's helpful for me also in therapeutic for me to document this experience and share with everyone that finds value in it. So thank you again. Cheers. Some coffee. So if you're new to the channel, this is your first time here. My name is Ashley and on my channel, I share tools with professionals, entrepreneurs and families. Um, that are interested in either relocating, visiting, um, or doing business here on the continent of Africa. And so currently in Tanzania, I spend a lot of time um, in my mind in South Africa, but travel to South Africa where my second business is based. And um, yeah, I found so much value in the online community in doing my research. So. I'm sharing that with you on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and connect with me via the links below. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about how kids are adjusting or how kids adjust, how my kids are adjusting to life here in Tanzania. And as I mentioned, they're living their best lives. I do have some notes. Um, as always, that I want to make sure that I touch on, so bear with me around that. So the first thing, they have an advanced understanding of a global perspective now living here in Tanzania. And one of the things that is so funny to me is American politics and, you know, um, hot topics is not out of the window, even though we live in Africa. Like, the world has all eyes on america um good or bad take that how you how you want and i think the way things are going right now um yeah there's a, there's a, a side eye on <laughs> what's happening in the u.s like all the time and with that my kids are very much still exposed to american politics american um, hot topics and current events, but they're also aware of what is happening here on the continent and around the world. So we talk about elections here um, in Tanzania, East Africa, Kenya is uh, about to have an election in a few weeks. Um, the political climate in South Africa, I even though I don't talk about that on this channel because I don't really feel that I have a position to speak on the politics because I'm not a citizen of either of these countries um, except for the US, I we talk about it. We talk about our perspective and what we see happening and what we understand and what we think things could be. And I could I would tell you that these are not conversations that are being had in the average American household. One, because the media doesn't really, um, the media doesn't expose us to that, right? It's not readily available. Um, and it doesn't really in our minds affect us in the US, the way that politics um, 
global politics affect the global community and we're a part of now a global community so my children have that perspective now and we talk about that regularly and i love that i'm grateful for that as somebody who studies global business global economics um global strategy like I'm just so happy that I get to share that with my children at this age. You know, it's not something that they'll have to go to university for to understand. It's something we get to discuss in the household and I'm, I'm super grateful for that. Um, so the second thing is foreign languages. So these girls are speaking multiple languages. Um, I think it was announced last week that Kiswahili was added as a, um, another language, a global language. Um, in business um, to what, I don't know what registry that is, but then I also read that um, Oxford Dictionary had added a couple of key Swahili words. So Swahili is a powerful language used all over East Africa um, and it is now being globally recognized and my girls speak it and, and I speak it but they are speaking it more actively in school, but also in the home. And that's dope. I love that. As much as I would try to speak Spanish to my oldest, she would like just shake her head and be like uncomfortable about it. But now my youngest, she's down. So we're speaking Spanish, we're speaking English, we're speaking Kiswahili, and my oldest is speaking French. Um, so that's four languages that um are being taught to my kids and like I love that I'm just so grateful for that um it's something that I always wanted for my kids before I even had them and had no idea like how I would give that to them in a way that wasn't so academic and they're they're getting that just because we now kind of operate in this different space so foreign languages um yeah and my three-year-old it's so funny she greets and she uses the mannerisms and like even if she's wrong and she knows a certain word she'll just say it and she says it perfectly and she has a proper accent and it's it's so cute it is it's so cute it's so cute she, she does like the whole dramatic romanticism that kiswahili um uses from especially Tanzania is the way they speak Swahili it's it's hilarious you would have to have seen it um the third thing is that they are meeting children from all over the world so I may have mentioned this in another video they go to international school here and um yeah my daughter my oldest daughter knows this uh she has friends from you know Zimbabwe Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, Russia. Um, and she knows that and she'll share with family and they're like, what, where's that, Botswana? And I just love that for her. I love that she now can say like, yeah, I have friends from all over the world. And again, it gives her just like a perspective, a different, global perspective empathy for understanding different cultures and yeah if you ex if we expose our children early um to whatever we expose them to it's something that they take forever and she is now building lifelong relationships with people all over the world and will get an opportunity to holiday in these different countries as she gets older and i'm just so excited for her for that um yeah, and that's the fourth thing. She gets invited to like holiday. So they're currently on holiday right now. Um, this is actually the winter here. So it's cool. I mean, it's like high 70s, low 80s. Um, but this is technically their winter. So they're on break. But as I mentioned, they're both in like a summer program. And they missed some school this year for you know, personal like family reasons. And it's a, it's been a really good opportunity for them to stay consistent in school as they get prepared for the next school term. Um, but my oldest was invited to go on holiday to Austria with her classmate. Like, I was like, oh, 
I would have loved to send her, but we had already committed um, to the summer program and she wasn't bummed out about it. She was actually really excited because she's been wanting to do boarding and this gives her an opportunity to do boarding this summer. Um, and so she missed out this time, but there will come, there will be more invitations and she knows that. So, um, yeah, like Austria, like for, for holiday, for summer. And all I had to do was buy her ticket. They were like, yeah, we have a family there. We have a summer home, you know, maybe send her with some spending money, but just her ticket will be fine. Um, yeah. So like, I'm assuming that this will be something that she'll continue to be extended um, over time. And yeah, like, I love that for her. The next thing is, it's a little tricky, but basically, <laughs> if you live anywhere in Africa, you know that as a, as a foreigner, you are forced to be one with nature in all ways, right? So I, even though I live in one of the most developed cities in Tanzania, probably the most developed, there is still nature like all around us. Um, and so at night, I have a mango tree outside the compound where the bats love to play. And between the bats, the birds um, and the bugs, the girls are adjusting just fine. Like my oldest daughter used to have a horrific fear of bugs. And like, I'm talking about crippling. She would see a bug and she would like literally start shaking. And even the little one, when we first got back, like the, the, the bugs were like, you know, she was a little extra with it. And over time, in this short period of time, they're just like, uh-huh, that's fine. Like, it's there where I'm still like, oh, oh. <laughs> but they're totally fine. Um, I told my daughter, don't eat in the living room because you'll bring bugs. My three-year-old. She says, mom, there's bugs everywhere. <laughs> and I couldn't even be mad. I couldn't even be mad at her. I was just like, okay, baby, you're right. Because there are, I mean, because we're also in winter season, there's like a high increase in like ants, um, carpenter ants. I don't think they're called carpenter ants. I don't know what they're, but they're coming inside to, to alleviate themselves from the cold. But um, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't want the ants, but she's like, they're in here anyway. So yes, they are. But they have like just this fine, you know, like, you know, they don't trip. They see them, they're like, oh, there's a bug, you know. And that's not how kids are in the U.S. Like, we're so afraid, you know, so just like, oh, a bug. And for, for real reasons. I mean, if you grew up in the hood, the ghetto, like, you didn't want to see them things. So that is not our experience now. But they're just used to seeing things, animals in their natural habitat, the geckos. And even on a ride to school, we're going to see cows and goats roaming. That's maybe not necessarily their natural habitat, but they're used to seeing animals outside of a zoo. And when you're used to seeing animals always in captivity, your interaction with them is different. And so there's a comfort that they have that they wouldn't have if they were still in the US. And it allows them to be more calm around nature. And I love that for them. So, that was kind of five and six. It was like a collective thing. They're just used to seeing bugs and they're used to seeing animals outside of uh, captivity, right? So the next thing, number seven, they have a heightened palate. I'll speak specifically for my oldest because my three-year-old, you know, she's a toddler. She still kind of has her things um, that we're working on. But my oldest now, she can really just transcend any type of like food now she'll try anything and she's developed um like more of a tolerance for spicier food um yeah and i'm just so proud of her like she did get introduced to sushi pretty young like around three or four so chopsticks, she'll do Indonesian food, Kenyan food, Ugandan food, Tanzanian food, of course. We love Jamaican food here, um, Turkish food, like 
she's just an international eater. She is a foodie. And uh, with the removal of like some of these fast food companies, well, all of them really, I mean, there's a KFC here. We'll go there every once in a while. We've probably gone there once in the last four months. Um, yeah, they're just, they're open to trying new foods. Again, the little one, not so much. We're getting her there. I think that's like genetic, but she's still pretty picky. She loves her coconut rice. But for the most part, there has been a clear shift in my oldest ability to just eat all the things that she loves um, and try all of the things that she's not used to. And the eighth thing, so domestic chores. I was already up on game with my eight. Well, she's 11 now, but I think she was eight when I taught her how to <clears throat> do her laundry. And um, she's, you know, she's really good. I mean, she knows how to clean, she knows how to sweep, do the dishes really well, wipe things down. Um, and I think that also there is a care and an etiquette in domestic work here that um, everyone participates in even the children so it's less of a of a of a, a burden on the parent or the mother it's a shared responsibility in the household and so she's also learning how to water plants and she goes out in the garden she hangs the clothes on the line she's learning how to iron again something that she was already doing before in the u.s um, we have a washing machine, so she doesn't necessarily wash by hand, but things like going to the market or going to the corner stores, the bodega, um, she can do that. And she's now really a part of the household uh, maintenance, my oldest. Yeah. And she loves that. And she really loves that independence. She's like, mom, do we need anything from the market? I want to go. Do we need anything from the store? Send me. And she loves really the ability to be able to go out and have a little bit of freedom at the same time, but to be able to use the money because this is still a cash society. So use the money, understand how much things cost, understand how much change she should get back. Um, it's helping her and she loves it. She really enjoys it. Uh, the next thing is experiencing loving care from the hospital. So I've had to take them both to the hospital, different reasons, and we all went for a dentist checkup cleaning and things like that. And the stark difference that my oldest uh, spoke about was just the loving care that she received from the doctor um, and how when she got upset and she was worried about a situation, the doctor comforted her versus telling her, oh, it will be fine, don't worry about it. Or she had a really, um, traumatizing experience that she remembers where a doctor really was like shaming her for her body size and she still that sits with her till this day it was probably three years ago and she remembers it where you know here I'm not saying that it doesn't happen but there's a level of care and compassion that we've gotten in places of um medical places and they're not they're not afraid to go to the doctor they're not afraid to go to the dentist my three-year-old got her teeth cleaned and she sat there and she was enthusiastic and happy and um again i don't know if this is just specific to being here but i could tell you they're adjusting just fine to having these experiences at hospitals and um at the dentist so they're adjusting great to that and the last thing as this video gets a tad long is, you know, children, they're just embraced here. A funny story, again, I have a toddler, she's learning how to write and I'm looking around at these walls are covered in crayon, marker, highlighter, color pencil. And I'm telling y'all, it takes me everything to not lose it, okay? Because that is just not how I was raised or how I was taught to operate. You write on my wall, you getting popped, okay? And our landlord came over to visit us a couple a uh, week ago or so, and I braced her. I said, hey, listen, the walls are a little crazy. And she's like, it's no problem. I'm Nashida. The children, they want to play. They want to show their art. 
they're learning how to write, it's okay, I'm not Sheeta. And I was just so shocked. I was like, wow, she's not mad. I'm sure she's gonna take it out of my security deposit anyway, but she was just like, it's no problem. And when I shared with her that, listen, if this were to happen in the US, you'd be tearing them little babies up, tearing their butts up. And she was like, she had just this look of pity for me. Like, what? Why would you do that to a child? And I realized, wow, we're just, you know, we, we teach our children to really be boxed in, you know, in a way to be obedient, to be compliant. And um, I don't know that that's good or bad, but I can say that the way that they embrace children here in such a loving way is something that my children will really remember forever. And it will set them up to be more loving and compassionate adults. So those are the ways that my children have adopted to living in Tanzania and they're adopting well, they're adopting great. They don't ask about America too much. They ask about McDonald's every once in a while. The little one, really. Um, the oldest one, I know she has a love for Target that she just doesn't share because every time I pop open her laptop, there is a shopping cart of Target. <laughs> but, you know, overall, they are enjoying life here and I'm just enjoying seeing them thrive. So. If you found value in this content, please be sure to like it and share it with someone else that you think would find value in it as well. And um, if you or someone that you know has an interest in relocating, expanding their business, or even visiting Tanzania or South Africa, I'd love to support you on your journey. You can connect with me below via the links and I look forward to supporting you on that journey. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.